Mr. Majeski's Anatomy 32 class lecture, Chapter 6, Part 3, Bone Formation, Growth, and Repair. So bone formation can occur in two main pathways, and this begins way back when we were embryos inside our mother's womb. And what basically happens is that mesenchyme tissue will eventually become bone tissue, and it can happen in two approaches. So the mesenchyme tissue can be turned into bone tissue through intramembranous ossification, or the mesenchyme tissue can differentiate into hyaline cartilage that is in the shape of the skeleton, that, and then that hyaline cartilage will undergo endochondrial ossification. So we will start with intramembranous ossification. And this is actually how most of the bones of the skull are formed. So basically, you imagine you have a big sheet of the um, mesenchymal tissue, so a big membrane or big sheet of it. And within that sheet of mesenchyme tissue, you'll get some differentiation of cells into osteoblasts. And these osteoblasts will do what osteoblasts always do. They'll begin secreting and forming the organic extracellular matrix. So within the mesenchymal tissue sheet, is osteoblasts forming uh, the extracellular matrix. And as this occurs, the osteoblasts will eventually begin to do deposition of calcium and phosphate into this extracellular matrix. And this will harden or calcify. And we'll also begin to see some of the structures we expect to see in bone tissue. So we will get uh, lacunae forming, and within that, the osteoblasts will differentiate into osteocytes, and there will also be canaliculi forming between the lacunae, and this will begin to spread and grow within this sheet. As it spreads and grows, the um, bone-like structures will soon form what we would expect to see for spongy bone. So basically, the first thing we're, type of bone we're going to form is spongy bone with all of its trabeculae. And then on the outside of this spongy bone, the uh, mesenchyme tissue is going to condense until eventually the spongy bone is going to be surrounded by two sheets of compact bone. So the spongy bone forms, and then its uh, outer surfaces will form eventually form into the structure known as compact bone tissue, giving us that sort of sandwich-like structure. And then the mesenchyme tissue will also form the periosteum, that is the fibrous and osteogenic layers that surround the bone itself. And that will be uh, how you get the flat bones of the skull. The second approach to bone formation is the endochondrial ossification. Here, we have cartilage, specifically hyaline cartilage, being replaced by bone tissue. And this occurs in most of the bones of the body. And it is a six-step process. So first off, you have the hyaline cartilage that is sort of in the right place, in the right shape for the bone it'll eventually become. And it'll be surrounded by perichondrium. So around the cartilage is the perichondrium, providing it with uh, access to nutrients from the blood vessels that would be in the perichondrium. So eventually, you will have the um, cells within the hyaline cartilage begin to uh, differentiate and to osteoblasts that will begin forming the extracellular matrix that you expected for bone tissue. And this extracellular matrix will begin to calcify. As it calcifies, you will soon have the development of a primary ossification center. And here you'll begin to see the structures that you expect to see in bone tissue, like uh, lacunae and canaliculized, um, and basically the uh, spongy bone will form. And where the bone is, you now have periosteum instead of perichondrium, because that's the tissue surrounding bone, osteum. Uh, 
uh, eventually that'll spread and you'll have the formation of a shaft and within that shaft the medullary cavity and as the bone forms uh, you will need the osteoblast to build it up but also the osteoclasts to cleave the uh, extracellular matrix to get rid of the uh, spongy bone within that medullary cavity. However, as you know, um, the diaphysis or shaft of a long bone is not continuous completely with the epiphyses on, on either end of the bone. So you end up having to have a secondary ossification center within the an epiphysis. And here again, it basically goes through the same approach of forming the uh, extracellular matrix, and then calcification, and then a spread of that. Um, until eventually you have a properly formed um, epiphysis with the um, articular cartilage at the end, that's hyaline cartilage, it's sort of basically left over from the original hyaline cartilage, and all the spongy bone and compact bone, and then also the epiphyseal plate, which is also made of hyaline cartilage. And it's at the epiphyseal plate that you'll get the um, length of the bone growth occurring. So let's talk about bone growth in terms of its length. So we're moving away from bone formation to bone growth. So as I said before, this occurs at the epiphyseal plate, and this is cartilage. So basically it's referred to as the cartilage model by which the bone grows. So the hyaline cartilage will undergo mitosis, and the chondrocytes will um, slowly be pushed down toward the... Um, diaphysis. So basically you only have the growth occurring at one side of the epiphyseal plate, and that's into the shaft. And as the chondrocytes uh, grow, eventually uh, they will start forming the normal extracellular matrix we expect for bones, and that will start to calcify. The chondrocytes will die and then eventually be replaced by osteoblasts that become osteocytes. And then when you become an adult and you no longer need growth in the length of your bones, um, the cartilage is replaced with um, bone tissue. Width of the bone growth is, occurs in a much different manner. So it is basically occurring at the periphery of the bone by the periosteal cells that are found in the periosteum that surrounds the outside of the bone. So here's an example of um, a bone growing in width. And something else to point out is while the osteoblasts are building up the bone on the outside, the osteoclasts are destroying or cleaving the bone on the inside. So we don't have a solid thick bone. We've got that empty shaft so that bones aren't too heavy. So basically what happens is the um, perios Within the peristeum, you have the osteoblasts that are building up the bone tissue. They'll form, instead of continuously everywhere, it'll actually form at specific spots to form ridges that will start to feel, uh, grow around blood vessels, leading to um, a tunnel. And then the uh, tissue inside the tunnel, where the blood vessel is, is now referred to as endo endosteum rather than periosteum, because now it's inside and the bone osteoblast will continue to build the bone up on the surface on the outside of the bone at the periosteum and soon you will have what is a central canal where that tunnel is and that blood vessels are and as growth continues you'll be getting the formation of everything you expect in an osteum the various lamellae layers and the lacunae and the canaliculi so that's how bone growth in width occurs. So just to make sure we get these definitions straight in our heads, bone remodeling is the ongoing replacement of old bone tissue with new bone tissue, which occurs by bone resorption and bone deposition. So basically, we, our bones are constantly being remodeled, which is good because this means they're constantly ready in case we have an accident happen bone fractures. All right, so there is what's known as an open fraction, 
probably what uh, some of us learned once upon a time is a compound fracture. This is where the bone breaks and part of the bones are actually uh, broke through the skin surface and poking out versus say a closed fracture where it just breaks a simple straight break with no um, rupturing of the skin. However, if a bone only breaks on the inside, it can still be pretty complicated. So you got the comminuted uh, fracture, which is where the bone basically shatters. Not very good. Another type of fracture is the green stick fracture. Here, the bones um, break, but they don't break completely. It's sort of like how if you tried to break a green stick, a, a stick that's still sort of alive, it'll be very difficult and you'll end up usually with just breakage on one side and it could occur in one or both of the bones in the case of say the um, forearm or the leg. You have the impacted fracture. This is where uh, the end of one bone is actually pushed into the uh, medullary cavity of the other bone. Next there's the pot fracture this kind of fracture, you have a breaking of the fibula, and it happens in such a manner that you also get some damage of the tendons and ligaments of the adjacent tibia. There's the Coles fracture. Here, this occurs in the um, forearm, and it's where the radius or ulna will break and then sort of get pushed in front of the other part of itself so that they aren't lined up properly. There's also compression fractures where the bone is, is crushed, and so there's lots of um, fractures within that bone, but it hasn't, like, burst, so it's not the um, comminuted fracture. And this often happens in vertebra. And there's a depression where the bone is basically pushed inward. A good place where this happens is in the skull. And then there's a spiral a fracture where the bone basically breaks up along the length of the bones. So it ends up being a really long fracture. So after obtaining a fracture, how does the bone fix itself? Well, it goes through a number of stages. The first stage is the formation of a fracture hematoma. So you got a bone that breaks. That also means the blood vessels in the bone break. That area fills up with some blood. You end up getting the formation of a cl large clotted structure. N after that, over time, usually three weeks or so, that hematoma um, blob is going to slowly be replaced with uh, cartilage. So you get the formation of, the, of chondroblasts that are going to build up this uh, collagen-like structure that's going to have you know, fibroblasts forming the collagen and so forth. Eventually, that cartilage is going to be um, calcified and you'll be getting a bony callus being formed. So it's still a bit of a lump, and so the osteoblasts are building up the proper bone structure, the blood vessels have healed, and finally you'll get bone remodeling to try to get the original bone shape back in place. And that's how bones fractures repair. So aging and bone tissue. Well, two principal effects are loss of bone mass. This is going to occur from demineralization of the extracellular matrix and brittleness which is the decrease in the rate of protein synthesis. Both unfortunate. One possible uh, disease that can occur from this is osteoporosis. This usually develops in middle-aged and elderly people. 80% of people who have osteoporosis are women, and this is because their bones are less massive than men's, and they often see uh, a dramatic drop in estrogen production after menopause, that actually leads to less calcification of their bones. And that is this portion and final portion of chapter six.